Hey everyone, it's Mitch here, and welcome back to Priority Problem Solvers. Today, we're diving headfirst into a powerful approach to understanding and solving complex problem systems thinking. If you've ever felt overwhelmed by the intricate web of challenges we face in our personal and professional lives, systems thinking might be the missing piece you've been searching for. Throughout this video, we'll unravel the core principles of systems thinking, explore its key components, and meet the influential figures who shape this transformative field. We're talking about a fundamental shift in perspective that allows us to see the interconnectedness of things, anticipate unintended consequences, and ultimately make more informed decisions. If you're ready to upgrade your problem-solving toolkit and unlock a whole new level of understanding, you've come to the right place. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future deep dives into the world of problem-solving. Now, let's get started. So what exactly is systems thinking? It's a way of looking at the world that emphasizes the interconnectedness of everything. Instead of breaking down problems into isolated parts, systems thinking encourages us to zoom out and see the bigger picture. Imagine a spider web. Touch one strand and the entire web vibrates. Each strand is intrinsically linked to the others. In any system, whether it's a business, a family, or an ecosystem, every part is interconnected. It's about understanding how components interact and influence one another. This holistic perspective moves us towards sustainable long-term solutions. Systems thinking is about seeing the forest and the trees, understanding their relationships, and using that knowledge to navigate complexity. It's a powerful tool for addressing any problem, from personal dilemmas to global challenges. Let's break down systems thinking into five core components. I like to think of them as the five C's, context, connections, cycles, change, and consequences. Context is understanding the environment in which a system exists. Connections are the relationships between different parts. Cycles are the dynamic feedback loops. Change is the evolution over time. Consequences are the ripple effects of our actions. These five C's help us understand and navigate complex systems. By considering each one, we can make more informed decisions. Now let's shift gears a bit and talk about the five pillars that underpin a systems thinking approach. These are personal mastery, mental models, shared vision, team learning, and systems thinking itself. Think of these as the foundational elements that support a systems thinking mindset. First, we have personal mastery, which is all about individual growth and self-awareness. It's about understanding our own biases, our assumptions, and our mental models, which we'll delve into more deeply in a moment. Next comes mental models, the deeply ingrained assumptions, generalizations, or even pictures and images that influence how we understand the world and how we take action. They shape our perceptions and our interpretations of reality. The third pillar is shared vision. When we're dealing with complex systems, it's essential to have a shared understanding of the desired future state. This shared vision acts as a guiding star, aligning everyone's efforts towards a common goal. Team learning is the fourth pillar. It emphasizes the power of collaboration and collective intelligence. 
When we work together, share our perspectives, and challenge each other's assumptions, we unlock a deeper level of understanding. Finally, we have systems thinking itself, which is both a pillar and the overarching framework. It's about seeing the interconnectedness of things, recognizing patterns, and understanding the system as a whole. These five pillars work together to create a foundation for effective problem solving and decision making in complex systems. By cultivating these pillars within ourselves and our teams, we can foster a culture of systems thinking and unlock a more comprehensive and insightful approach to the challenges we face. Chapter 4 Now, let's dive into the three overarching themes that permeate systems, thinking, interconnectedness, synthesis, and emergence. Interconnectedness, as we've discussed, is the fundamental principle that everything is connected. It's about recognizing the intricate web of relationships between different parts of a system and understanding how changes in one area can ripple through the entire system. Synthesis takes this concept of interconnectedness a step further. It's about seeing the system as a whole, understanding how the different parts fit together, and identifying the emergent properties that arise from their interactions. It's about connecting the dots, seeing the patterns, and recognizing that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. This leads us to emergence. Emergence refers to the idea that complex behaviors and patterns can arise from the interactions of relatively simple components. Think about the intricate patterns of a flock of birds in flight. Each bird follows a few simple rules, yet together they create a mesmerizing display of coordinated movement. These three themes, interconnectedness, synthesis, and an emergence, are central to the system's thinking framework. By embracing these themes, we develop a deeper appreciation for the complexity of the systems we're a part of and gain a more nuanced understanding of how to navigate them effectively. Chapter 5 Now let's translate these themes and principles into action. Peter Senge, a renowned systems thinker, whom we'll discuss more later, outlines five disciplines that can help us develop a systems thinking mindset. The first discipline is again personal mastery. This discipline emphasizes the importance of clarifying and deepening our personal vision, focusing our energies, developing patience, and seeing reality objectively. It's about cultivating self-awareness, recognizing our own biases, and continuously learning and growing. The second discipline is mental models. This discipline encourages us to surface and challenge our deeply ingrained assumptions and generalizations that influence how we understand the world. By examining our mental models, we can identify potential blind spots and open ourselves up to new ways of seeing things. The third discipline is shared vision. This discipline emphasizes the power of building a shared sense of purpose and direction. When people are united by a common vision, they are more likely to work together effectively and overcome obstacles. Team learning is the fourth discipline. It highlights the importance of dialogue and skillful discussion that allows collective thinking to surpass individual thought. The fifth discipline, and the one that integrates all the others, is systems thinking itself. This discipline involves seeing interrelationships rather than linear cause and effect chains, and seeing the process of change 
rather than snapshots. By practicing these five disciplines, we can develop a more holistic and systemic way of thinking and acting, which can lead to more effective problem solving, more innovative solutions, and ultimately, a more sustainable and fulfilling future. Chapter 6. Now it's time to meet the man who played a pivotal role in shaping the field of systems thinking, Peter Senge. Senge, a senior lecturer at MIT, is a renowned systems scientist, author, and the founding chair of the Society for Organizational Learning. He's best known for his seminal work, The Fifth Discipline, The Art and Practice of the Learning Organization, which popularized systems thinking and introduced the five disciplines we just discussed. In his book, Senga argues that organizations, like all living systems, are capable of learning and evolving. He emphasizes the importance of fostering a culture of continuous learning where individuals and teams are encouraged to challenge their assumptions, experiment with new ideas, and share their learnings openly. Sengji's work has had a profound impact on the fields of management, leadership, and organizational development. His ideas have been embraced by organizations around the world, helping them to become more adaptable, innovative, and resilient in the face of complexity and change. One of Senga's key contributions is the concept of systems archetypes, which are common patterns of behavior that occur in complex systems. These archetypes, such as limits to growth or shifting the burden, can help us to recognize recurring patterns in our own organizations and systems and to develop more effective strategies for addressing them. Sanjay's work reminds us that we are all interconnected and that our actions have ripple effects throughout the systems we are a part of. By embracing systems thinking, we can create more sustainable, equitable, and fulfilling organizations and societies for ourselves and for generations to come. That was a deep dive into the world of systems thinking. We've explored its meaning, its key components, and the influential figures who shape this transformative field. Remember, systems thinking is not just a theory, it's a practice, a way of seeing the world and interacting with it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends family, and colleagues. And don't forget to subscribe to Priority Problem Solvers for more insights into problem solving, decision making, and personal growth. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.